Welcome, friends. Tonight our discussion will be about human sexuality. Not that long ago, within my lifetime, medical books and schools and etc. discussed human sexuality from a purely anatomical put way. They described it as a man should be with a woman because that's how those body parts work. That's how the reproductive system works. Thusly, they considered any kind of lifestyle that departed from that to be a form of mental illness. The homosexual community has successfully reversed this, and now the focus is swung way over to the other direction, assuming the existence of genes that directly encourage you to have sexual attraction to one specific gender or another. I believe this is equally flawed. Human sexuality to me, as I've seen it from other people, eyewitness accounts, personal experience, and dealing with others, comes from a collection of drives. And I do believe we have genes for these drives because they are reflected in every relationship that appears. And as taken as a whole, these four drives are fo only truly fulfilled in society by a, homo a heterosexual monogamous relationship. The four drives are a drive for company. That drive is a drive to have somebody around you. It's the same drive that wants you, makes you comfortable sitting in front of a TV with your spouse watching the news or watching a movie or going out to see a movie is just simply having someone around you and while friends can be nice seldom are they able to be relied upon to be around all the time second drive is sexual fulfillment sexual fulfillment is a drive that is fairly universal it is easily achieved you can achieve it by yourself you can achieve it with the aid of inanimate objects you can achieve it with the aid of pornography, you can achieve it with the aid of other people, you can achieve it with the aid of any gender, and in some cases you can even achieve it with the aid of other species. Sexual fulfillment is often what is the main focus of the discussion, although if you look at it in a relational relationship way, it shouldn't be. For third drive is a strive for security. This is knowing that your partner will be there for you, and more importantly, knowing that when needed, you will be called upon by your partner. A sense that you are both needed and you have someone who will fulfill your needs. There is someone who is going to be there for you. That is a sense of security. And the last drive is the drive to reproduce, that is to have children. And that is the basic drive of the reproductive organs. Now, the nature-nurture argument has been much debated. But, if you look at sex, human sexuality from the context of these drives, you can easily come to the conclusion that the one system that works for society is heterosexual monogamous relationships. Not that other situations can't exist. Now let's look at each one of these types of relationships. Let's start with the homosexual relationship. Homosexuality, does it fulfill the company drive? Absolutely you will be able to have company. Does it fulfill the sexual fulfillment drive? Absolutely, you will have fulfillment. Does it feel the sense of security? Absolutely, you will have someone who will be there for you. Does it fulfill reproduction? No. Every homosexual relationship that has children has to acquire the children from outside of the relationship, either via donors, therefore the child has another parent, or be it adoption, therefore the child has two other parents. But in either case, one or both of the homosexual couple parents or members is an adoptive parent, not a genetically linked parent. So it doesn't fulfill these drives and sadly it also requires society to have in place means of adoption or means of an outside surrogate to be provided to these individuals. This opens a world of alternate elements of society that may not be totally healthy. Now, let's talk about polygamy. What does polygamy fulfill? Does it give you company? 
I'd say about 50% shot on that one. Um, does it give you sexual fulfillment? Yeah, it can. Does it give you a sense of security? Not really. But it can definitely provide reproduction. Assuming there's a male and a female in the mix. Now, on the issue of security for polygamy, the problem is the very fact that one person can be in only one place at one time. When you have three people, unless you have two women and one man, that one man can only be with one of the people at any given point in time. Even when talking to a group of people, you're either talking to the group as a entity, i.e. the group, or you're talking to a person in the group, namely Sue or Jane. Now, the man can only be with one of these people at one time and can really communicate with one of them at one, any one time. The end result is you're going to have a situation where you have competition from the other two partners for the attentions of the third. And that third person, being human, will find a preference. They're going to have somebody they relate better with at any given moment than the other person. This means one person is always left out of the relationship. And while they may have financial arrangements to provide an artificial sense of security, it does not give you the sense of security that you'll be the one that the person comes to when they have problems. Or that you can come to them and they'll be available for you when you have problems. So, there you have it. Human sexuality. Much like our skin color, much like our hair. All involve multiple genes, producing multiple characteristics, producing a when formed together producing a common characteristic we recognize as our sexuality. It's possible to stray from this, this framework. It's possible to have any combination of the two, but in every relationship these drives will hit you. So, where should we go as a society? Well, I'll leave that up for another discussion. But for now, uh, from this basis is as I understand human sexuality. I thank you for listening today, and have yourself a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.